Okay, going international. Okay. So, <coughs> what is the objectives under this chapter? The first one, I say, define the reason of going global. Why the business okay, should go in global? Okay. Identify the different types of international organization. Understanding the strategies for international business. Okay. Know the political legal process. Okay. Identify competitive process and understanding cultural process. Okay, let's continue. <coughs> Why go global? Okay. The, the, let's look at what is the, the factors that the business uh, go global. Okay. First thing first is to capture new market. Okay, capturing the market. If the company is from Malaysia, so uh, the uh, the company want to expand the business to entering the new markets. For example, in United Kingdom, for example. Okay, and then the num number two is because uh, diversification. Okay, and then cost advantages. Okay, cost advantages. Okay, uh, such as economy of scale. Okay, economy of scope, global sourcing, brand name, leverage. Okay, so maybe because if we the business go global, okay, we can have a source, for example, human resource with a lower cost, for example. Okay, if we uh, uh, enter into the new market, okay. We can have a lot of uh, customers instead from Malaysia, okay. We have we will have a customer from uh, United Kingdom and other countries that are near to the UK, for example, okay. And then taking advantage, okay. What else the factors that uh, the business should go global? Is taking advantage of different law and regulation. Okay. If compared to Malaysia and also UK or US, okay, they uh, have a, a lot of difference in terms of laws and the regulation, right? So in terms of labor costs, okay, cost of protect workers, okay, cost of protect the environment, and also the taxes is different with other countries okay that's why some of the business okay why they go global or why they go international because they want to get okay the difference okay the advantages that offer in that country okay? maybe the taxes uh, in uk maybe lower from malaysia okay that is why the company needs to go global. Okay? And then what else? The factors. Okay? Learning. In terms of learning or transfer of knowledge. Okay? For example, uh, like uh, Malaysia. Okay? Uh, having a company in Japan, for example. Okay? Because of what? Okay? Japan, uh, as we already know, the knowledge about the technology is very advanced. Okay, so that by having the company in Japan, so uh, the company will learn, okay, on how to, okay, macam mana cara teknologi yang digunakan dekat Japan, for example, and then leading markets, okay, maybe, uh, because uh, the company need to be um. Uh, the founder of the product in Japan, uh, for example, or in Indonesia, okay, the first company that uh, produced that product, okay, that not similar with the other product in Indonesia. So because of that, they want to lead in the market. What else is homo homogenization of consumer needs? For example, Modern telecommunication technology, okay, global customer, so that 
the company will have a global customer and also global linkages. Okay. So what else? Because maybe in Malaysia, there is a lot of competition. For example, in uh, cosmetic industry. Okay. If we go to Thailand, for example, maybe the competition there is lower. So that the business will expand more and then the business will have a more sales, for example, like that. Okay. And also first mover or disadvantage. Okay. So that is all the factors why the business should go global. Okay, let's look at the different types of international organizations. Okay, so there are a lot of that uh, international organization that you can see. For example, okay, multinational corporation. Okay, what is the multinational corporation? A firm that operate in multiple countries but manage from the home country okay maybe uh, the company have uh, company uh, the company that uh, they have in malaysia indonesia or thailand okay but every company is managed by themselves okay in that country all right that we call it as multinational okay how about multi domestic corporation? Okay, multi domestic corporation is a firm that operates in several countries but decentralizes the management to the local country. Okay, for example, okay, the, co the company in Malaysia. Okay, so they also have a company in Indonesia. Okay. Okay, Indonesia. But the management, okay, the HQ, okay, is from Malaysia itself, okay. So, the people in Malaysia, okay, that uh, will uh, manage the company in Indonesia. I guess it's different from the multinational itself, okay. So, multi-domestic decentralized management in Malaysia, okay, for example like that. But for global co com company is an international company that centralized management in the whole country. Okay, so let's look next. Okay, there is also types of international organization that is transnational or borderless organization. Okay. It is an international company that eliminates artificial geographical barriers. Okay, and then Born Global. Okay, this organization is a uh, or a company that chooses to go global from inception. Okay, that is all the types of international organization that we have. Okay, so let's look at activities. Point four, okay, how organizations go global, okay? So, the minimal global investment to the significant global investment, okay? So, uh, some of the company needs to invest in global, okay, because of the source. Sourcing, for example, maybe human resource, okay, land, for example, okay? So, because of the economic system in that uh, country okay that is a global sourcing and then because of exporting and importing the products okay the company need to go global okay because of the licensing uh, maybe the low cost and easier to get the license from other countries and then if they want to open another franchising company so what else is significant? Why the business go global? Okay, why the company invest in the global company uh country? For example, because of the strategic alliance. Okay, for example, maybe because they want to transfer the knowledge. Okay, to, to share the knowledge. Okay, to share the technology. Okay, some new technologies that not have from other country. So that is significant global investment. And what else? 
maybe uh, joint venture maybe uh, because uh, for example proton or proton need to have a joint venture with uh, uh, a jaguar company for example like that okay or they want they need to have a foreign subsidiary okay so the headquarters is from the uh, home country and then the foreign subsidiaries is uh, from other countries okay that is why the companies need to go global okay let's look at the strategies okay what is the strategies for international business okay as i mentioned before they have exporting i think maybe because the strategy need to export some of our product okay for example malaysia is exporting our uh, durian to uk china okay musang king durian okay we export okay the best uh, musang king okay we export to uh, china or philippines or japan something like that okay and then what other strategies strategies for business to go international because of alliances licensing multi-domestic franchising and global okay let's look at exporting strategy maintaining facilities within a home country and transferring goods and service abroad for sale in foreign markets so maybe the, that country again did not have uh, many uh, musang king product so that is uh, the demand is there okay that is the strategy to export our product to that country okay what else for example uh, <coughs> we export uh, oil palm okay oil palm uh, Malaysia export the best oil palm to uh, Arabic country for example because the Arabic country did not have the oil uh, oil palm is compared to Malaysia and Indonesia. We have plantation for on uh, for palm. Okay, so that is the exporting strategies. Okay, it will increase the economics of the Malaysia itself. Okay, if we export our product uh, to another country. Okay, so what else again okay, is licensing strategy? Okay because of why the company needs to go for global okay because the licensing strategy okay a firm okay that is a licensor in one country giving other domestic or foreign firms licensee the right to use a patent okay trademark technology okay production process for product in return for the payment of a royalty or fee for example if you look at a life insurance strategy companies uh, that is pepsi company okay and coca-cola with the bottle companies distributors okay if you look uh, in malaysia okay there is some of the companies that have that license okay to uh, produce okay, the product for beverage for example okay under uh, pepsi and coca-cola pattern all right so we need to have the license okay before we produce the product with the with the uh, other company pattern all right so kita tak boleh suka hatilah kalau kita nak produceakan produk kita suka hati kita, kita letak uh, contoh kita nak buat bag lepas kita letak jenama gas uh, tak boleh okay because uh, guess uh, punya brand brand name is Patent okay yeah they are the the cup kalau kita tahu kataan kita kalau guess okay they are the cup tu that we call it as a copyright and patent okay so if you uh, uh, produce your own product and then stamp the product with your name okay you are not Okay, without the license. Okay, so that is uh, wrong. Okay, salah. Eh, so what can do? Dah dikira sebagai uh, meniru hasil kerja ataupun 
um, pattern atau trademark yang dah uh, dah ada license okey so kita tak boleh cukup perhati untuk uh, produce our product with other uh, company uh, brand okey so uh, next is what strategy is franchise okey you already know franchising strategy okey for example McDonald's and KFC okay. the the main company is not from Malaysia okay it's from UK uh, US okay so the parent organization that we call it as a franchise granting other companies okay companies from all of around the, uh, around the world okay so we can find out McDonald's outlet KFC outlet Okay, all around the world okay, because the parent company gives the uh, granting other companies uh, franchise to write the right to use its trademark name and to produce and sell its goods or services okay so that why that's why you can if you go uh, many country like thailand Filipina, philippines uh, indonesia or uh, dubai okay US especially, okay, you can easily find out the okay, McDonald's outlet and KFC, right? For that, we call because of what franchising strategy, franchise, okay. And then what else? is the alliance strategy okay alliance strategy is agreeing with other companies okay to pull physical financial and human resources to achieve common goals okay that is the alliance strategy so the countries from uh, the company from malaysia can uh, from malaysia and then sharing the financial in terms of capital for example okay, sharing the the staff okay with other countries such as uh, singapore okay, or hong kong okay to achieve the common goals to establish the company and then to increase the profit for the shareholders okay that we call it as alliance okay so next is okay okay Okay, what is the needs for a multinational uh, global strategy? Okay, so the needs for a multinational global uh, strategy is the significant competitors. Okay, the second one is the decisions need to be based on global consideration. Okay, if the company is multinational company, company, okay, uh, the management of the company should. Uh, uh, ensure that the decision is based on the consideration of each country okay so and then the new goods and services must be developed for whole world okay for example such as uh, product uh, what you said the right example okay? some of the foods okay for example the company food company or food industry company that have multinational companies okay should uh, make sure okay that product for uh, for consumer okay especially in malaysia okay, you need uh, they need to uh, decide okay so the, the product should be halal for the first thing okay? because Malaysia many of them is Muslim Muslim people right so if you are multinational company need to develop uh, the goods or services must be for the whole world that uh, suitable for that country okay so narrow-minded attitudes need to be overcome okay if you want to uh, if a uh, multinational company should not be narrow-minded okay? so maybe because uh, 
the difference of the religion or difference of races okay, should not be uh, the factor for the multinational company to be biased okay, in terms of to decide for the business okay, management. Right? So profit target need to be based on product lines and foreign managers need to be promoted to senior ranks at corporate base companies. Okay, that is the most suitable strategy for multinational companies. Alright. So let's look at political legal process. Okay. Okay, and in political legal process, okay, you can look at the political risk. Okay, if you if the company need to go globalize or if the company need to open up um, the the company in other countries, okay, we should uh, assess for the political risk, okay, assessing what is the risk related to the political mechanism, okay, so that is very important, okay, okay, let's look, what is the political risk is the probability, okay, risk is the probability, that the political decision, okay, political decisions, okay, or events in a country will negatively affect the long term profitability of an investment. Okay, so maybe because of the uh, political uh, environment is not stable in that country, okay, you always have. Kita uh, kata perang saudara, okay stable political that will uh, affect okay your business performance that okay macam mana kalau dah bergolak negara tu dah bergolak selalu ada peperangan okay like you look at Palestine okay and Israel right okay so the political uh, environment that is not suitable for company to open up business there okay because because of the Keperangan uh, eh yang berlaku tu menyebabkan kita akan uh, efek lah investment kalau kita nak uh, to open up the company there, okay? And then we should assess the political risk, okay, with the some tools, for example, domestic instability, okay, foreign con conflict. Is there any problem of that country? Towards the foreign foreigner, for example, maybe because of their bias, okay, with the different races, okay, is there any? We should assess first, okay, and then for political climate or economic climate, we should assess first, okay, using the these four tools, okay. Maybe domestic instability, okay, amount of subversion, revolution, assassination, okay, guerrilla welfare and government crisis in a country. Okay, we should as the company, okay, that need to invest in other country, okay, we should assess for domestic instability, okay. So this affect our, okay. we should avoid the company that. Have um, that uh, have a crisis in their in their country, okay? And then foreign conflict is there any degree of hostility that one nation express to others, okay? Maybe because of the the uh, don't like the people uh, Muslim people, for example, okay? For example, like India, okay? So they always have a group argument with. Muslim people, okay, we should look at that, all right, we should assess for foreign and conflict. And then political climate, likelihood that a government will swing to the far left or far right politically, maybe because of the, uh, uh, like UK, uh, uh, yeah, like you, United Kingdom right now, because of the Queen is already passed away, okay, the changes of the, changes of the monarchy there, the changes to the King of Charles, okay, that is we call it as political climate, okay, so that can uh, uh, affect our company's uh, performance there, okay. So, economic climate, 
reflects the extent of government control of markets and financial investment as well as government support service and capabilities. Okay. That is the economic climate that we should know and then we should reflect what is the that is the price of the uh, the price of the currency there is lower or higher okay we should consider that okay economic climate and then political mechanism okay for example is there any protectionism there okay tariff quota okay this is all the political mechanism okay protectionism protectionism tariff quota subsidy cartel bribery extortion okay this is all the things that if you uh, work in international company or multinational company you will find out these things uh, mechanism okay okay so let's look one by one what is it okay protectionism covers the many mechanisms designed to help a home based industry or firms avoid or reduce potential or actual competitive or political threats from abroad. Okay, so maybe because of their need to protect some of the industry, okay, so the government should impose some of the policies, okay, that need to uh, so the company, okay. The global or international or multinational country should follow the, the, the policies okay, before we enter the, that country. Okay. So, tariff for government tax okay, that the government impose the taxation how percent, how many percent, maybe 10 percent of the goods and services and when entering the country. Okay. For example, okay. Some of good such as the clothes or shoes or handbag, okay, from outside from outside Malaysia, okay, will be imposed the tariff. Okay, that's why the branded uh, goods or uh, foreign uh, goods, okay, usually uh, they are, the price is higher if you compare to the local products, uh, right? Because one of it because of the company itself needs to pay for the tariff. Okay, because the government puts the uh, the, the tax. Okay. What is quota? Quota is the restriction of the quantity of a country imports of some time on its export. Okay. So maybe quota for uh, import products. From outside, okay, there is some restriction. Okay, so maybe because uh, um, why the government restrict the quota for import or export? Because maybe it need to uh, protect or need to help the uh, company or business, uh, the local business, okay, so that uh, they can also have. Uh, enough sales okay. so kalau tak ada kurangnya import product so dia boleh dapatkan daripada local company okay. so as memberikan peluang kepada local company untuk uh, menjalankan perniagaan okay. <coughs> subsidi okay what is subsidy okay a direct or indirect payment by a government to its country's firm to make selling or investing abroad cheaper for them to more profitable. Okay, subsidy, okay. So like Malaysia, okay, so before this, okay, the oil price, okay. Uh, minyak, okay, minyak untuk kereta tu, sangat okay. minyak. Okay, petrol, eh, petrol uh, price, okay, is subsidized, okay by the government, Malaysia government. Okay. So that the people uh, in Malaysia need to pay the lower price of 
uh, if they want to have a petrol, okay, by uh, with the lower price, okay, if compared to other kind countries, because the government want to uh, help the their citizens, okay, so that it will not burden the citizens pay more for the, the petrol itself, okay. Subsidy is given by the government. Okay. Bantuan. Okay, bantuan. Eh? Subsidy. Okay, same goes to uh, the price of chicken. Okay, the price of flour. Okay. All the the consumer products. Okay. Some of it. Okay, the price is Given uh, okay, the government give the subsidy for that consumer product okay, in order to protect the in order to help the citizens okay, not pay much for their uh, product consumer product okay, so that is subsidy. Okay. Cartel, what is cartel? Cartel is an alliance of product producers engage in the same types of business form to limit or eliminate competition and control production and taxes okay. so bribery uh, bribery rasua and improper payment okay made to induce the recipient to do something for the pay. okay that is not good okay bribery is not good extortion payment made to ensure that the recipient doesn't harm the player in some way. Okay. So what is grace payment? Okay. Grace payment is the small payment almost gratis, gratis used to get lower level government employees to speed up required paperwork. Okay. If you look here, grace payment is some of the rivalry also. Okay. That so it's not good also. Okay, competitive forces. Let's look at the competitive forces. Okay, we worry among existing firm in industry that is competitors. Okay, that is the some of the factors of competitive. Okay, second one is the suppliers that supply the bargaining power, and then trade of goods or services okay substitute goods and services okay if some of the goods is uh, maybe the function is the same okay it will substitute with other things okay for example uh, like chicken okay substitute uh, uh, goods okay the people can eat uh, other protein okay other protein sources such as fish okay eggs okay it will lower the, uh, the chicken uh, prices okay and then the trait of a new competition okay new entrance okay and then the customer bargaining power that is some of the competitive competitive forces okay what uh, if the company need to go global okay. rivalry among existing firms in industry Okay, competitors are the single most important day-to-day force-facing organization. Okay, rivalry among competitor producers, producer strategies such as okay, price cutting, okay, advertising promotions, enhanced customer service or warranties, and improvement in product or service quality. That is the uh, strategies that uh, among the competitors produce. Okay, so let's look what is the supplier bargaining power. Okay, actually, the supplier bargaining power is the bargaining power of supplies often controlled. Okay, how much they can raise, raise the price above the cost or reduce the quality of the custom goods and services. So that they will provide before using the customers. Okay, that is the supplier bargaining power. Okay. All business play the role of supply, supplier, and customer in the competitive environment. Okay. 
So let's look at the traits of goods or services. Okay, substitute goods and services. In general sense, okay, all competitors produce substitute goods or services or goods or services that can easily be replaced with another goods or services. Okay, it will uh, effect to the, our the product with the same, uh, for example, same function. Okay. Maksudnya kalau tak ada satu barang tu kita boleh tukar pada barang yang lain. Kita tak ada beras kita boleh makan tepung. Okay. Kita gantikan. Okay. Itu pun antara salah satu substitute goods and services ataupun kita panggil dia sebagai trade lah ataupun menyebabkan kompetitif. Uh, okay. Persaingan antara company. Right. So let's look uh, culture forces. Okay, culture forces. Okay, views of social changes. Okay, whether passive or active. Okay, time orientation, scarce or unlimited, and languages. Okay, verbal or nonverbal. Okay, this is the uh, the forces or the factors. Okay, uh, that will uh, increase the competitive compet. Uh, terhadap uh, company tersebut okay? languages okay maybe because of the different language you okay? how the company should uh, uh, kena nak menyesuaikan ataupun nak memahami keadaan country uh, kan betul so, sebuah country tu akan ada perbezaan uh, dari segi macam mana nak communicate okay? with this uh, different language okay Okay, and then value system. Okay, whether the country is uh, having the value system of individualism or collectivism. Okay, it will affect the company. Okay, on that country. Okay. So that's all. Summary: Define the reason of going global. Okay, already know the different types of international organization. And then, understanding the strategies for international business, knows the political and legal forces, and then we already know the identified the competitive uh, forces and understanding the factor forces. Okay, is there any question class that you need to ask? Are you online? Joshua, ada soalan? Hah? Okay. Richie, Richelle? Okay. So, let's look at um, video here yeah, about why go international? Why go global? Hold on, okay?
why the connection is so bad 